FOSS Active Investigation is more than hands-on science. It is how science becomes accessible for all students. Students use science and engineering practices in cross-cutting concepts to construct explanations about real-world phenomena. These are the components of active investigation, although they don't always follow the same linear progression. 1. Context. Sharing, questioning, and planning. 2. Activity. Doing and observing. 3. Data management. Recording, organizing, and processing. And 4. Analysis. Discussing and writing explanations. To establish context, students share prior knowledge about a particular phenomenon through a discussion. Generally, a focus question is introduced. Students might plan a method to investigate the focus question, or one might be provided for them. In the last investigation, we've been looking at how does the density of a substance change when you add heat. But how does it get hot in the first place? So let's think about our Earth. What kinds of materials are here on Earth that might get hot? We talked about the air. What else? Definitely land and maybe water. Land, water, air. What kinds of land do we have? Concrete because it like it just like keeps the heat because every time like you walk without like shoes on the concrete, it stays hot. It's really hot and it hurts. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Yeah, yeah. Concrete, air, water, land. We have lots of different types of materials here on Earth. Raise your hand if you can think of any more. I thought so. OK. So hmm, what do you think affects the way they heat? Because the sun is not out. I feel like, like very early the sun has not risen yet. Also, um, probably the hottest would be in the afternoon. In the afternoon, the sun is higher. For your focus question, we're going to consider what factors affect the surface temperature on Earth. During each FOSS activity, students conduct the investigation, often in collaborative groups. They observe their first-hand experiences with objects, organisms, and materials. This provides a common experience for all students. This only goes up to one. And one more minute before we take our first temperature. I got, I got, 20, I got 26. I got 25. Um, my temperature went from 20 to 23. What did you get, Austin? 25. I don't get it. Mine is at 30. Mine is 31. Mine should be a 60. Keep, keep it down at the same location. Observed data are recorded in science notebooks while students are working with materials. Some data need to be organized in a way so students can see patterns or cause and effect relationships. What patterns are you observing in your data? No, I didn't. I marked it at 37. Well, when you, when um, the soil was in the shade, um, it decreased by four, or around five, approximately. Mm -hmm. And then it started decreasing by one. And when it was in the sun, it increased by five, and then started increasing by one. So the pattern is that it'll increase or decrease by five around, and then increase and decrease. Interesting. Are you guys all noticing that large increase, and then? Yeah. So it's a larger increase, and then as it gets warmer, it's more subtle. What do you think causes that? Maybe as it gets hotter, there's not, like, maybe since it's already hot, it can't, it's harder to make it heat up more because it already has a lot of thermal energy in it. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder what the next reading is going to be like. The most important part of active investigation is extracting meaning from data. This is done with students rather than for students. It requires student analysis, logic, discourse, prior knowledge, and scientific communication. Students explain phenomena, ask additional questions, 
answer the focus question, and provide evidence to support their thinking. In the next section, students have gathered in a circle for a sense-making discussion. How does the energy travel from the sun to the earth? What do we call that kind of energy? Thermal energy. Thermal energy, great. What's another thing that you can say about that? Solar energy. Solar energy. And the energy is coming from the sun to the materials in the form of? How does it travel? Tell your neighbor how it travels. Um, it travels from the light, sort of from the sun. What happens to that energy when it strikes the particle in each material? Can you show us your particles? Everybody get your particles out. Okay, particles of, let's do particles of air. Okay, energy strikes the particles of air. What happens to those particles? Everybody show us. They heat up. Ooh, I see it. it's moving faster, more collisions. Okay, and what's happening to temperature? <coughs> show me with your thumbs. <coughs> Heating up, isn't it? Okay, how can you include that in your diagram, in your model? Who wants to add that to our model? Who can add that to our model? Go ahead and add that to our model, how the energy, how the particles are doing what you showed in your hands. And as is drawing, you all showed me that your particles started moving faster. What is that energy called again, that energy that is in motion? What is that called? Tell your neighbor what that energy is called. Okay, hand up, what's that energy called? The energy is called kinetic energy. The investigation's guide for each course is designed to support students' thinking through all aspects of active investigation with detailed instructional supports for the teacher.